We now have the blessing of the Advent wreath and candles, and we extend this blessing to all the Advent wreaths at home. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Let us pray. O oh God, by whose word all things are made holy, pour out your blessings upon this wreath and candles, and help us that we may use it we may prepare our hearts for the coming of Christ and may receive abundant blessings from you. We ask this through the same Christ our Lord. All-powerful God, increase our strength of will for doing good, so that Christ may find an eager welcome at his coming and call us to his side in the kingdom of heaven, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. And good morning, and welcome to the Church of St. Gregory the Great on this, the first Sunday of Advent. We turn to the Lord, watchful and alert, seeking to see his face and longing to be saved. The intention for this Mass is for the repose of the soul of Qi Yu Wang and Tao Ying Lei. Our celebrant is Father Dominic. I'm sorry, Father Cristiano. Come, O oh God of all the earth, come to us, O oh righteous one. Come and around you. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Good morning, everyone. Together with our brothers and sisters who follow us from their homes, through social media, we begin the season of Advent, a time when we are called to open our hearts to receive the Lord that constantly is present, constantly is manifesting himself to us. In order to have a good time this year, we ask for divine assistance, but also we humbly ask for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, our light in the days of darkness, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, our hope in times of struggle, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, our promise to God. May Almighty God have mercy on us all, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O 
Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with right, righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer, you named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you. While you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had not heard of from of old. No ear has ever heard, no eye ever seen, any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry, and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are polluted like rags. We have all withered like leaves, and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name who rouses himself to cling to you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us up to your guilt. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you the potter. We are all the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. Son of men, 
you have claimed for yourself. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. May your hand be on the man at your right hand, the Son of Man you have confirmed as your own. And we shall never forsake you again. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge, as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. And by him, you were called to fellowship with his son. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch Watch, therefore, you do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, 
watch. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm sure that by this time, many of us, in one way or the other, have echoed the psalmist words, how long, O Lord, how long must we endure these pandemic restrictions, this pandemic necessary wear of masks, when can we be freed from the impersonal social distance norms and greet others again with a hug? a handshake, or a kiss. In many ways, our persisting, persisting questioning when and how long during this COVID-19 crisis echoes the same expectant waiting and longing of the Advent season that starts today. First, this for us is a time when we primarily are invited to prepare ourselves for Christmas. Remembering the first coming or the incarnation of the Son of God to our humanity. But in the same time, we remember and our minds and hearts are led to what our tradition tells us, what we in faith expect, which is the second coming of the Lord in time, which is for all of us a big mystery. But since Advent focus upon both, both comings of the Lord as an infant and as a just judge. This time becomes a period, a period for us when our faith should be different. It should be expectant. It should be something that helps us to really achieve what we desire. It helps us to understand the mystery or the mysterious presence <clears throat> of Christ in our midst. <clears throat> In our homes, families can transform the anxious waiting for the pandemic's end into a period of joyful expectation for the Lord's coming, filled with hope and 
is spiritual anticipation. With these feelings, we can see ourselves becoming pilgrims. Pilgrims that are attentive. Pilgrims that are awake. Pilgrims that learn how to watch because we walk with a goal. We walk with an objective. We do not walk as wanderers without any destination. And everything should be done with the eyes, with the GPS of faith. Faith gives us the real meaning for the season. And in this walk towards God, we know that there are many, many things that can distract us, confuse us, and make us sleepy. There is no worse tragedy for the faith and for the evangelizing mission of the church than a sleepy, distracted, a scattered Christian, ultimately aimless, to encourage us to reinforce the north of our journey. We are presented with the prophetic literature of, from the Old Testament. The book of the prophet Isaiah will be presented for us in this coming four Sundays. And today, his reading works like a prayer. A prayer that we can make of our own today. Applying to the situation of our world now. Just like in the past, when people experienced the emptiness of God because they turned away from Him, we see that situation in a very clear way in our world when the absence of God is not His fault, but ours. When we simply, when we sometimes naturally ignore Him or banish Him from our priorities and from our lives. So, in face of this ignorance, the Gospel invites us to stay awake and vigilant. And this is the correct, this is the right attitude of the servers that await the arrival of the owner of the house at, at any moment. Now, the question we ask ourselves is how do we stay awake and watchful so that none of us, we may not be caught off guard by the unexpected coming of the Lord who <clears throat> who shows himself 
in the events of our lives. Well, precisely by uniting our sincere attitude of conversion, of the renewal of our active hope in something that we should feel partake, partakers and belongers, which is the kingdom of God that depends on you and on me. And we do that with our works of charity and constant prayer the authentic virtue of hope calls us not to be or not <clears throat> to stay in a passive weight in which God will simply solve our problems without putting us as instruments of change of everything that needs to be transformed. So, we are called to have an inner disposition to prepare for His coming, building ways and relationships based always on justice, love, peace, and on the strict practice of the works of mercy. If we find ways to bring all these components together into our lives, we will be ready, ready for any time, for whenever the Lord appears. This is the best way to prepare ourselves. So, my dear friends, today, <clears throat> today we are invited to really see the biblical meaning of what can be to look what is vigilance and what is for us to really watch. They are three words that call us to have the same attitude. To look is to see carefully and deeply to look is to fix the eyes with attention and hope, which is not a passive wait. To look is to be surprised. How about if we start looking at people, at things and events of life, with this kind of spirit and inclination. Vigilance. Vigilance is the fruit of faith, the fruit of hope. And we cannot be vigilant if we don't love. We watch when we wait. We watch when we believe, when we, wa we, we watch only when we trust, we love, and we act. So, let us not stop watching. Watch because God continually amazes us. He always comes but we do not know when, 
how and where. So, watch not to sleep, letting the occasion of meeting pass. Even in this time of global confusion and uncertainty, with all our many personal struggles and issues, we need to be strong and alert. Watch to recognize and welcome God whenever He makes Himself present. Watch because vigilance is the daughter of hope. Watch because we all should live in a continuous Advent spirit. Let us now all together profess our faith. I believe. We bring to God the longing of our hearts and our desires for the well-being of all God's family. For believers everywhere who wait for the Lord's coming, that this Advent may help them prepare, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have wandered from their relationship with God, May the memories and hopes of this season open a doorway to God, who loves them. Let us pray to the Lord. That the hearts and minds of those called to serve the Lord as priests, deacons, and in the consecrated life will not be lacking in any spiritual gift, but will continue to be enriched in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. That our hearts will be filled with joy as we prepare for the birth of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. That all the faithfully departed, especially members of our parish, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Almighty Father, as we look forward to the coming of your Son, fill us with your mercy and answer our prayers. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. During our time of the offertory today, giving thanks to God for the grace bestowed on us in Christ Jesus, enriched in every way, may we not only seek to see his face, but just as our Lord gave his all for us, May we in return give all that we are able 
through the mission and ministry of this parish, that we might be his face in our world. Your thoughtful and charitable donations, your generous hours of service, and your unceasing prayers are remembered at this table. Gracious God of wisdom, who hear your people's cry, teach us ways of prudence, O breath of God most Afar, come and make your home among us. Let us see your birthing star. Mighty voice on Sinai, who Moses heard in that mine and your sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, the Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design he formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all that is last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all love you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all love you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of of me. The mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Barry, our Bishop, all the clergy, the religious, the ministers, and the people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we all say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done. Give us the bread. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another some sign of peace. God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who called to the supper of the Lamb. Spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. 
Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
We have been given the opportunity to bring hope during this season of Advent by taking a tag or two from our giving tree to help those in need. Please follow the instructions on the tags. Return your gifts from the tag under the tree by December 7 and keep this person or family in your prayers. We'd like to thank Brother Tobias and his team of parish volunteers who helped get us in the Advent spirit uh, within our decorations in our environment of the church. Do you still need Advent candles or holders or both? Are you looking for unique Christmas gifts for your loved ones? This morning, after Mass, the Filipino American Ministry will be outside where you can purchase beautiful Advent candle holders with the nativity scene. Each Advent item comes with free candles and Bishop Barron's 2020 Advent book about the Gospels. They will also have religious Christmas ornaments, ceramic Christmas balls with hand-painted designs, and a few nativity figurines. And 100% of the proceeds will be donated to St. Gregory Church. Another opportunity to take advantage of this holy season is to take, as you leave, outside in the basket, a copy of The Word Among Us, one per family, with wonderful articles on this holy season of Advent and daily reflections to help us get ready for the Lord's coming. Following the completion of the recessional hymn, our ushers will help us exit with social distance. Thank you for celebrating this liturgy with us this morning, and may this season of preparation bring us all closer to our Lord. Let us pray. May the mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with all of you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good Sunday to all of you. Thank you, Father. Thank you.